Okay, so this is a test of a couple of things. Um, one is how to record some of the electronic stuff that I'm doing. Um, so in this case, um, this is the USB to, uh, this is the controller to USB, con uh, the Nintendo 64 or PSX controller to USB adapter. This is the N64 connector here. Uh, we've got uh, ground, data, and uh, th in theory, 3.3 volts. And if we look over here at the, um, is this the right one? No. Is this the right one? Yeah. So here we can see the, uh, the ground data, three volts. And we have ground data, ground data, and three volts. So what I have set up right now is ground and the data line in the middle and it's going over to my oscilloscope. And what's interesting here, this is pretty far zoomed out, um, but if we start zooming in, then we can see that each one of these ticks is actually a packet of information. And the packet of information is supposed to fit this uh, uh, how do I do this oh it's locked hang on um, it's supposed to fit this protocol and so every so often every whatever time um, and I don't th we could get it off of this chart here uh, if we really cared, but I'm not going to worry about it too much right now because I want to be able to kind of understand whether these clock signals are working correctly. So if we look in, we don't really care about the exact protocol right now, but we want to see a high level as the normal uh, hold, no data being sent signal over this one data wire. And then every once in a while, we should have a blip down to zero. And the trick here is uh, that even when we have zero to the normal, uh, like full voltage um, signal is 4.3 volts. And the 4.3 volts is, <laughs> doesn't make any sense because the voltage is supposed to be 3.3 volts going into the system. So we have four volts uh, max on the data line and I'm not sure why. So, if we zoom in here, we're supposed to see nice square uh, signals along the way. Do I have a pointer? I'm sure this will work. These signals here are supposed to be nice and sharp. They're supposed to be square waves. And what we see is we see these kinds of interesting uh, ramps, which is not really what we're expecting to see when we're looking at uh, signals. We're supposed to see a nice sharp uh, sharp rise up to whatever the voltage is and then a sharp fall. So we have some kind of uh, inductive loading or resistive loading reactance basically on this wire that is making the otherwise supposed to be sharp spiky bit curved. Uh, if we were trying to get that shape, what we would be doing is we'd be using a low pass filter and carving off high frequencies because it takes a high frequency to switch from zero to high rapidly. It takes a lot of high frequency content. And so if you have a low pass filter, you can roll off those frequencies and you can get these uh, curved bits. But because it's only on the rise, I think that there's something inside of the controller that's not allowing that uh, the voltage to 
uh, pass through one of the gates inside of the controller. That's one way. Um, the other way is, is that there might be a bad solder connection. The cable might have too much inductance. Um, there might be too much resistance in the wire. But what we can see is, is that any kind of time, any time that you're trying to do a signal, uh, you end up with problems <laughs> when you try to uh, understand what's going on when you have all these curves in the signal. And they actually get worse over here uh, when you start trying to look at the, um, the data. And it's wiggling around because of the way that the oscilloscope is picking the start point. But um, that's not what you're supposed to see. You're supposed to see a nice curved, uh, a nice sharp angle on those uh, bits. And so there's something funky going on with the way that the, the polling signals are going back into the... Uh, into the USB control thingy. And so, in theory, as far as I understand, if we look at the protocol on the website here, um, we're supposed to see four bytes when the system pulls. We're not going to worry about reading commands and writing commands and reset commands. Those are all having to do with either the cartridge on the bottom of the controller or uh, resetting the zero position on the joysticks, which we don't really care about at this point. So the two things we care about are the command that's being sent from the little USB adapter board thing, this thingamajig, and uh, how the system responds to these messages. So as far as I know, I, I you know if I, if I were looking at this thing, I would expect to see a one and then four bytes uh these four the, the and so the, the four bytes on this command response are uh here and then here and then here and then here so the first two bytes are uh i believe this is msb so i need to think about that but um i think that these are the buttons and then some reset stuff which is mentioned down here and then a uh, this is yeah. So one byte for the X position, and then one byte for the Y position. Um, so in theory, if this thing were working correctly, I would assume that the message here is supposed to be the controller sending either a zero status command or a one polling command and then the rest of this is the controller responding and so one way that we could check this is by trying to unplug the controller i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hold my controller and all this garbage at the same time but if i unplug the controller here then I would expect to be able to see the oscilloscope still sending some part of that message. And if I come back over here, we can see some part of that message. So because this message, this th these bits here are, well, one out of focus, because I don't have an autofocusing webcam, so that's a thing. Um, these bits are uh, still curved over. And so it might be that I have inductive loading on uh, the probe, but that's probably unlikely. I'm going to guess that there's something wrong with the actual uh, circuitry on the... At this point, I would think that that is caused by uh, loading on the actual circuitry of the USB board itself. And there's a lot more capacitors on there. Uh, there's a lot more... Uh, passive components. I mean, this, this board has a lot of stuff going on on it. And there's a bunch of flux coated all over the board and everything. So I'm going to guess that that thing is, as you said before, uh, has some kind of bad component on it. Um, but in any case, what we can see is we can see some kind of information of the system trying to pull. And depending on how they're actually trying to manage this protocol, we can probably make an estimate about how the system is working. Um, but I don't, I don't see the start bits and stop bits that I would expect to see here. 
Um, so I would expect this is supposed to be a zero 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 zero, but I don't remember what the protocol actually is. So I'll have to go back and look at that. Um, generally, if you've got those kind of rounded spikes, you're gonna have problems though. So um, I think that this is. Uh, let me go back up here and read this. Um, where did I read it? Data is transmitted at 250k kilohertz baud rate, which is with a bit, one bit, represented by one microsecond low, three microseconds high, and a zero bit represented by three microseconds low, one microsecond high. So we would expect to see for the status command, which I don't think we're using. I think we're using polling. I think that we would what we would see is we would see a byte of zero 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 one. So zero 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 one um, for the command. I'm just using these as the the bit place. Um, so if the first bit is MSB, most significant bit, so we're doing uh, most significant bit first, which is the high bit. So we're doing 0, 0, 0, 0 for the first four bits. That would mean that we would expect to see three microseconds high and uh, sorry uh, one millisecond low and then mic sorry one microsecond low three microseconds high four times so maybe one two three four five six seven eight one microsecond low three microseconds high is supposed to be a one. Uh, that timing doesn't look correct. <laughs> so I don't think that this controller is running at the right speed either. And so uh, if we really cared, what we could do is we can go into the um, timing of this and start looking at the period. Uh, But I'd have to set out the markers and all that stuff. This is actually probably easier to do in a uh, digital logic analyzer. Um, so I'll set that up at some point. But the curved bits here is uh, something. So if this is running, there's no controller input. However, what we can do is we can log it. Uh, we can zoom out here. Uh, let's move this position over a little bit. Um, you can see the trigger point here. The trigger point is here, uh, and the trigger level is over here. So when the signal gets down around to that level, then it tries to trigger. And I think that it's having some issues here because of the way that the, the spikiness is going. Triggers on the oscilloscopes are never really great. Um, but what we can do, or we should be able to do, should be able to zoom out here. Come on, where are you going? Oh, God, I lost it. Oscilloscopes are bothersome. Just reset it. Come on. Okay. So move it back over here a little bit. Zoom out. Zoom out again. And so I'm going to put this position here in the middle uh, where I think the controller, if it were hooked up, would start to respond with these bits. Uh, let me check something real quick. I'm actually recording this. No. I'm recording on the stream. It'll be okay. Yeah, what a mess. <laughs> okay. So, um, now I'm going to plug in the controller, and we'll see what happens. Now sorry about that. Just okay. And suddenly, I should have left this over here, suddenly we start to see bits from the controller itself. So if we zoom around a little bit, then we can see that that was still in that position where the 
the pre uh, the the command from the controller uh, from from the from the console would be in this case these bits here. That's the command strength these eight bits, and then we should see uh, you know four more bytes after that of data. And uh, I'm gonna try to get this in view so that we don't have to worry about the commands there. We can see some a little bit more detail of the bits themselves. So what we should see, we should see um, some of those bits changing based on what we do on the controller. So if I press A here, does anything happen to this first bit, this most significant bit on the first byte being sent? This range in here should change if things are working at all correctly. So let's zoom in on that bit a little bit more closely here. There's a bit in there somewhere. I'm going to guess that it's either this thing is going to go up or this thing is going to toggle over. See what happens, if anything happens at all. <laughs> yeah. OK, so that's A. That's B. Uh, that's Z. That's start. That's down. Uh, oh sorry. Uh, up, down, left, right. So that's the first byte. OK, so let's. All right, so that's right. Right, so we have right. And then we should have reset and reserved, which reset is one when L, R, and start are pressed. So start, left, right, left, right, left, right, start, right, left, right, resolved, we're not going to touch, left, right, C up, C down, C left, C right. Okay, so that's all the, that's all the, uh, the normal things that we would expect to see. So it looks like the controller is actually sending, what should be meaningful bits. I'm gonna guess that it's either a timing issue, uh, with the actual. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's the time. Yeah, the controller's responding. We have two unknown systems that are that seem to be following their protocol. But those curves are way too much. So I think if we fix the curves on the ends of these bits, we'd probably get back to a reasonable system. So then I should be able to move X, X, this is X to the right, X to the left, uh, Y down, and Y up. So Y up looks like it's actually going through the bits. Uh, if I can do it slowly, that'd be great, but I can't. And then it maxes out. Oops, I'm moving Y around. And then it looks like it's uh, using uh, IEEE 754. Uh, no, it's, yeah. Uh, it's using two's complement negative numbers. Because like right below zero would be negative t uh, one, which is basically two fifty five or whatever it ends up being, and then it goes down towards zero. Cool. Okay, so it looks like all the things are actually being sent correctly. So it looks like the controller itself is actually sending the correct stuff. Um, I'm gonna guess that almost all these problems are on the control or are on the uh, on the board itself on this thing. So yeah, this controller is pretty shit. 
but at least at least it seems to be trying to respond correctly and the timing looks relatively okay so what i'm going to guess is that if we dug into uh, let me get this camera back up i'm going to guess that if we started digging into the way that these connections specifically the data line here are routed through maybe uh, through this R0 and maybe some of the capacitors here where the filtering capacitors are. Maybe we have a bad capacitor in there. Uh, maybe we have a bad RC circuit that ends up making a low pass filter at the wrong rate that is causing the whole system to have those rounded curves. So that's my theory. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and uh, check the schematic of this thing. I've not looked at this. This is just probing. Um, and then if I can find a way to get those uh, those edges <laughs> less curved then maybe the system would be picking uh, would be picking those responses up correctly but as it is when I load up the uh, the game controller uh, I guess I can just show you the screen can't I because I am doing no no which one is it no which one is it this one yeah okay what a mess yeah, so as you can see, like when I have um, when I have it enabled, it's just all over the map. <laughs> so it's trying to pick up signals, but the buttons, the, the the data that this that this board is sending out is just absolutely garbage. So it it is correctly showing up as a USB device. It's getting uh, assigned as a four axis 16 button joystick because it's a PSX uh, controller as well. So if you've got a PS2 DualShock controller plugged into the other port and you have this thing toggled over to uh, PSX mode, then it'll show up as having a lot more axes and it would end up having um, the DualShock controls as well as the, uh, the triggers. I believe on DualShock controllers are uh, put uh, potentiometers. Uh, so this is the correct setting uh, in the joystick window, but this thing is just sending bad data. And if it was trying to read those those return clock signals, uh, <laughs> the chip in here is an 8051 processor. Uh, it's a Cypress FX2 Easy USB chip. And I've got one of those kicking around here somewhere. Um, and as a dev board, um, they're like 12 bucks or something. So it's a pretty cheap chip. But uh, if those if those signals are that curved, <laughs> there's no way the 8051, even if it were overclocked, would be able to pick those up. So I think that's what the issue is. I think that there's an RC circuit somewhere in this thing that's not correctly populated and that it's rounding the circuits. That's all I got for now. Uh, if I find anything else, I'll report back.